Okay, hi everyone. Um, it's Rita, of course, and this um, is just going to be a quick video that I'm doing for you guys. Um, basically, I don't want to make it seem like I'm so far along in the pregnancy because I'm not. I still have eight weeks left um, if I make it to my due date. But um, just now that it's like in the 30s, like it seems like all the weeks are blending together. And some weeks it's kind of hard to find something new to talk about each week. Like sometimes nothing really happens and not that much changes. So if that does happen, what I'll probably do is do like I did for the 32 week video and just make you guys a quick video um, showing my belly um, for the week. And then if I find something more important to talk about, then I'll make a sub video. So this is going to be a sub video of my 32 week pregnancy journal. And this is going to be all about the birth plan. Um, for those of you who don't know what a birth plan is, it's basically just a plan on paper um, of how you want things to go, what you don't want to happen. Basically just preparation so that things go smooth when you get to the hospital. Now, of course, everything doesn't always go as planned, but there's nothing wrong with having a plan. So um, with that being said, you can always make your own birth plan. Um, if you've had kids before, you know how to do one. You can just type one up. Um, if you don't know anything about a birth plan or don't know what should be in one, um, then you can do like I did, and you can print a template offline and fill it in. Like they'll have everything done for you, and then you just print it, and you can fill in um, stuff yourself. Now me, I downloaded mine off of thebump.com, um, T-H-E-B-U-M-P.com, um, and it looks like this. Um, it's about six pages long, and um, I think it was a great idea. Um, I looked at it, and I, I already had an idea of what a birth plan was, but I didn't know how to really write one up myself. So when I looked at the template, um, it was a good idea that I went with this because there were some things on there that I wouldn't have thought about myself or that I didn't know that they did at the hospital, you know, just things that I was not used to because this is my first baby, and this is my first time, you know, in labor and delivery, so... TheBump.com, plenty of other websites have um, birth plan templates, but this is just where I got mine. So again, it looks like this. This is TheBump.com and birth plan. I know it's backwards because it's a camera, so sorry. Um, now, I'm not going to read you guys everything that's on here, just because that would be way too long. But what I will do is just kind of tell you guys um, which things I did pick and kind of elaborate on it just a little bit. So, um, at the beginning of the birth plan, basically, it just asks for your information because this is something that you can hand to a nurse. You can put it in your hospital bag and then give it to um, a nurse because you're going to be in so much pain. Well, not everybody, but you're probably going to be in pain. Your mind's going to be everywhere else when you're in labor. And so if you have it written down, typed up, you know, whatever, then you don't really have to worry about it. You can just say, here, you know, this is what I want. This is, these are my preferences. And not have to worry about remembering things and forgetting things. So you just put your name on it and your partner's name, um, your due date, um, and your doctor's name um, at the top of it. Then um, there is an area where you're going to notate, like, if you have anything that's, like, um, that has gone wrong in your pregnancy, like having gestational diabetes or um, having group B strep or anything like that. I don't have any of those things thus far, um, so I did not select any of that. Um, you're also going to have a section that says how you have planned your delivery. My delivery is planned vaginal. Um, I do have a heart condition, which some of you might have known from an earlier video. Um, and I don't think that that's going to affect me too much during labor and delivery. I have some family members who think that it might possibly affect me, um, just being in so much pain and with my breathing. Um, and I do some blacking out, you know, just all symptoms because of my heart condition. And um, they're worried about how I'm going to handle labor with that. So there is a possibility. I'm not ruling out a C-section, but I don't want one. That's not how my birth is planned. I want a vaginal delivery, but if worse comes to worst, um, and after, you know, exhausting all options and the doctors think it's the best thing, then I am open to a C-section. I mean, of course, I have no choice. <laughs> um, 
um, who would you like in the room with you? Um, during actual labor, while I'm laboring, I'm sure there will be a few people who might stick their heads in and out. Um, but during the actual delivery of the baby, um, I would just like to have my partner Keith in there and my mom um, and, and the doctors. Like, I don't need a whole bunch of extra people in there. And I'm kind of self-conscious about just having everybody looking at my goods. So um, just those two, my partner and my mom. Um, during labor, what would you like to have done to, like, basically calm you down um, and ease your pain? Um, I said that I would like the lights dimmed. Um, I would like as few interruptions as possible. Um, I would, my battery's dying, sorry. Um, I would also like to have, um, what did I say? Oh, hospital staff limited to my own doctor. And basically what I mean by that is I don't want any students, residents, anything like that working on me. This is my first baby. I want to make sure everything goes good according to planned. Um, so I want my actual doctors, you know, that have been there for a while working on me, if not my own doctor, if they're not on call. Um, I would say that I want the room quiet, but sometimes when I'm in pain, um, I don't like it to be quiet because all you do is think about the pain. So I am um, up to maybe having music played. Keith is really good at picking out, like, some, like, soul type of music, some relaxing music. So I might have him make me, like, a playlist, and then we can play that while I'm laboring. Um, during the first stage of labor, how would you like to be? What positions? I said that I would like to, during the first stage of labor, um, probably do some walking around if I'm up to it. If the pain's not too bad, why not walk around the hospital a little bit and try to progress things naturally? Um, and then, of course, I want to be laying down, um, you know, just to be on the safe side and so that they can monitor to me. Um, and that's one of the next questions was, how would you like fetal, fetal monitoring to be? And I would like it to be continuous, um, unless I am up walking around, of course, I can't be monitored that way, um, but otherwise, if I'm in the bed, I would like it to be continuous monitoring, just in case anything happens with Kimura, her heart rate drops or anything like that, they'd be able to catch it right away and do what they need to do. Um, I am not interested in um, a urinary catheter <laughs> if I don't have to have one. Um, I don't want one. It just kind of freaks me out. Um, would you like labor augmentation? And for those of you who don't know what that is, they're referring to things like Pitocin, um, membrane stripping, things like that basically to encourage labor unnaturally. The thing that I checked off, I do not want Pitocin unless, you know, I'm in labor for 48 hours or something. and. Um, it's absolutely necessary. I don't want it. But um, membrane stripping, I hear a lot of girls say that they get that done in their videos. Personally, I don't really know what that is or, like, what they do. Um, so I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not saying I want it either. I'm going to do some research on what is actually membrane stripping because I know girls normally get it done at their doctor's appointments before they're actually laboring, and it, like, kind of helps bring on labor. So if anybody wants to comment or shoot me an inbox message and just, like, inform me on what that actually is, that would be great. Um, how would you like pain relief to be used during your labor? I say that I am up for breathing techniques, of course. Um, heat therapy, it works during your menstrual cycle. I don't know if it's going to work during labor, but I'm up to try. Um, massages, I'm completely okay with that, um, and a standard epidural. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys, but I'm not against the epidural. Um, it's a personal decision. Um, I just know my own pain tolerance. It's very extremely low. Um, who knows? I may not need one. I may not have time for one, but if I do need one and the opportunity is presented, then I am going to ask for an epidural or um, say yes if they offer it to me. 
Um, I'm not sure about any of the other pain medicine that they give you beforehand because I hear a lot of, I'm not sure the exact names of the medicines, but I know a lot of times I hear girls saying that like, oh, it made me so high feeling, or it made me delusional. And I even have one of my friends who she um, was on that medicine like before an epidural and she said it just made her so high, like she felt seriously like she was on drugs high. And she said she didn't even remember delivering her baby. I don't want that to happen. I want to remember this moment. So um, just some of those other options scare me. I really don't want anything going through my bloodstream that might affect me or Kimura. Um, just more something that's going to numb the pain. And I hear that an epidural really doesn't affect um, the baby at all. Um, it just has the possibility of affecting you. So hopefully I get a doctor that knows what they're doing. Um, during delivery, what position would you like to be in? Um, and what would you like to use for support? I said I would like to be semi-reclined um, and use foot pedals for support. Just because, to me, in my opinion, it seems like it would be so much easier to push being in a semi-sitting, semi-reclined position rather than laying flat on your back. And also, it seems like if you had the foot pedals instead of just somebody holding your legs, it seems like you would have, I don't know if you have an epidural, you're not going to really have too much control of your legs anyway, but it seems like you would just have more support to push um, if you had foot pedals and if you're kind of sitting up. Um, correct me if I'm wrong for those of you who have had babies, but um, that's just what I want to try anyway. Um, as the baby is delivered, what things would you like to do? I said that I wanted to push as directed when I'm in labor. Um, I know a lot of times girls like to push spontaneously because they say that when the doctor tells you, okay, no, push, all right, now stop, that your body really just keeps going. But this is my first baby, and I want to make sure I do everything right, so I'm going to listen to the doctor. So I want to push as directed. Um, I want to touch the baby's head as it crowns. Um, I want to have a full dose of epidural, of course. Like Once again, this is if I get an epidural, if um, I have time for one, I would like a full dose of epidural while I'm pushing. Um, I do not want them to use forceps. I do not want them to use the vacuum. If they don't have to, don't do it. Like, that just kind of freaks me out because I don't want anything to happen to her um, or them to damage her or just somebody to be operating those tools and not know what they're doing. Like, if I don't need them, don't use them. Um... And I want to help catch the baby, if possible. I know some doctors probably won't let you, and they'll just place the baby on your stomach afterwards. But if I can reach down um, when they say, okay, she's coming out, and kind of help them place her on me, I think that would be cool. So why not? Um, would you like an episiotomy? I said yes. Rather than risk a tear, I'm up for an episiotomy. I mean, think about it. When you rip a piece of paper in half, um, or you cut a piece of paper in half, which one's easier to put back together? The one that you cut in half, um, because it's a straight line. Um, so I just don't really want to tear. Um, and hopefully they'll numb me or something <laughs> first. Um, immediately after delivery, what would you like to do? Um, I would like my partner to cut the umbilical cord. And I do want to see the placenta. I know it's weird, but hey, I grew an organ. And a baby, like, I want to see what comes out of me. It's interesting. So, I don't know. It's weird, but I want to see it. Um, after the baby, when would you like to hold the baby? Immediately after delivery, of course. Why not? It's my baby. Um, um, I like the, the baby's, all their tests and the baby's first bath to be done in my presence or my partner's presence. Um, I want her in the room with me all the time. I do not want to use the hospital nursery um, just because I've been waiting nine months for her. I want her with me at all times. I don't care if I'm sleep deprived. You know, I'll get sleep another day. Like, I want to spend all my first moments with her. Um, and I would like for my partner to be able to sleep in my room and have unlimited visiting, um, as well as my family have unlimited visiting. Um, the rest of the birth plan, basically, they have some sections, like if you're having a boy, do you want them circumcised? Um, if your baby has to go into the NICU, what do you want done? 
Um, just there were some other things that don't apply to me. But if you want to get the whole gist of the birth plan, go to thebump.com and check it out for yourself. But um, that's my birth plan, you guys. And I'm running out of time for this video, so I gotta go. But I will see you guys at 33 weeks, just in a few days. So I'll see you then. Bye.